try again. Yes, I think we're live. Are we live? Oh, Can yeah, you see yeah, us yes. on Facebook? Yes. Fan yes, yes. Fantastic. If you're just joining us, if you're new and you're watching the replay, perhaps, welcome to Wednesday's Facebook Live. It's really good to be here with you. Today, we're going to speak about words in the news. So it's a great idea to keep with us if you want to learn vocabulary connected to the news. And I'm delighted to say hello this week to Monica. Hello. From Blog Dead English. Hello. And uh, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm fine. And I'm looking forward to this new episode, this new Facebook Live, because it's very interesting to talk, to talk about words in the news. Because they are not so easy to understand sometimes when you read headlines, you know. That's right. Especially did you watch British English? Did, did you watch the news today? Uh, not no, I haven't had time. <laughs> not yet. No, but what I do is I read the headlines. I'm a headline reader. Right. I, I usually I open like three, four newspapers and I just go over the headlines. So you that, skim, that you is, skim the headlines. Exactly. And that is called a headline reader. That's what I am. So I don't. If if I see something interesting, then I will open the uh, the article and start reading it. But many times it's just reading the headlines. Yeah, so me too. That's I, one I of do. the first words we have: headlines. No. Yes. Before we before we yeah. look at the vocabulary, though, let's introduce ourselves yeah. because maybe there's people watching for the first time and they don't know who we are. So yeah. if yeah. you've never seen us before. My name's Craig. I'm from mansioningles.com. That is a website where if you are a learner of English, you can improve your English with free exercises and free courses and lots of great material for English learners. And we also have a podcast that you can find at inglespodcast.com. And then there is one of the best bloggers on the internet, mm -hmm. Monica Stocker. Okay, yes, we have I, and a page called Blog del Inglés and also Blog para Aprender Inglés. That's the old blog that has lots of resources. And Blog del Inglés is the new version. And the difference is that everything is explained in Spanish. So normally this Facebook Live and more or less one or two weeks, you'll have it written down in an article with a video, with an infographics, all kinds of details. So you can also find the information on this blog, Blog del Inglés. Okay, oh, lots of resources. And if you want to learn English, you can also hire us. We have uh, lots of native teachers uh, for Skype, over Skype or over Zoom, over other uh, platforms. Okay, so that's it. Okay, well, today we're talking you. about words in the news and people are starting to join. So let's say hello to Yannette. How are you doing? Christine, hello. Eric from Mexico City and um, Pablo Tega also from Mexico. Aldo, hello there, from Peru and Anna from Buenos Aires. Fantastic to see so many different countries represented this week. Yes. And hopefully we more people will join later. Yeah. But you said earlier that you, Monica, tend to read the headlines, correct? Yes. So I am a headline reader. <laughs> That's what I am. I don't do you, go very deeply into the news. Do you read and newspapers? Yes. I, okay. I try to read, like, well, online newspapers, okay? Online oh, right. newspapers. And, and I just try to see different views. So I also read British newspapers, a couple of them, BBC and mail online or some kind of tabloid all kinds of things because i want to also learn more vocabulary because there are a lot of words that mm, you might not know no there's there's mm -hmm. a lot of vocabulary in newspapers because the way of of presenting the news is completely different from the way of speaking there's, there's a whole format so headline rhymes with deadline yeah, and what's the difference? Because headline, is it cabecera in Spanish? Cabecera. Cabecera. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it will be the, the, the text, the big letters at the top of an yeah. article. But also you hear on the news, when you watch the news, uh, here are the latest headlines, for example. So the headline's the most important news of the day. But what's a deadline? A deadline? 
it's un plazo. So deadline is like uh, you need to do something uh, in, in a period of time. There is a mm -hmm. deadline. But maybe there is a second meaning that I'm missing. No, is that's the meaning. I don't think so. That's that's the meaning I understand. Um, a deadline, fecha tope, a date that you have to have yes. something finished That's a good by. translation, yeah. And it goes deadline. with um, the verb to meet. So you need meet. to meet yeah. your deadlines or you can pass a deadline if you go over the time. Are you good with deadlines when you're working? Do you like deadlines or do they make you stressed? <laughs> I mean, they make me quite stressed. <laughs> And I have this habit of trying to finish as soon as possible so that I don't have, I, I'm, not, I'm not late meeting my deadlines. And Me there's too. one deadline especially dislike is deadlines for taxes. Yes, in June. Yes, to pay taxes. Oof. This, uh, this comes every quarter. You have a deadline. It's about 20th of the month, you have to pay taxes. So, Christine saying I, she would say titulares for headlines. Yes, I've heard that word. Cabecera as well, yeah. is the first headline in the newspaper, and titulares is generic for every, you know, every headline that you find in the newspaper. That's what she yeah. means. It's true. Titulares. Good translation, Christine. So don't confuse no. those two words, headlines and deadlines. Deadline. Also, we've got an eyewitness report. So witness in a trial, you may have heard. Somebody who sees a crime, for example, is witness to a crime. But very often you see people reporting news because they are on the spot. They've seen something happening. At the moment, there's the eruption of the volcano in Las Palmas. And there are many eyewitness reports of the lava flowing down the volcano into the sea. So people who are there when it's happening, are, are they give an eyewitness report on the news. And I think a very good example of eyewitness reports are, is on Twitter. Twitter is used for that purpose now, because in the past, this didn't exist. You have to wait until the journalists went there and they... They filmed the area and they brought it back to the television and broadcast it and all that. But nowadays, the locals can just go with their phone and film it and send it to the media and put it on Twitter. So we know it immediately. You know, that's of course, it's really much cheaper. It's much cheaper for it's the news channel cheaper, yeah. because they're not paying their reporters and they're not flying the reporters all over the world. Exactly, yeah. because you can just get someone there to go as an eyewitness, testigo ocular, you know, and, and write a report. But it's not even necessary. You just tweet it, said, I just saw all this happening here. And then the, the journalists go and ask and ask for the videos and all that. But sometimes it, it annoys me because people who are eyewitnesses, they're not reporters. They're just people on the street. So, for example, sometimes when I watch Spanish news in the summer and it's really, really hot, so they'll interview somebody from Cadiz and they'll say, how do you feel today? And the person says, well, here I am in Cadiz and it's really, really hot. It's August, of course, in the south of Spain, it's going to be hot. They interview eyewitnesses on the street and they don't really have anything interesting to report or anything to say. I don't understand why they do that. The, also depends on the kind of question because... The, I think they can be useful in places where the media has not arrived yet, for example. Uh, yes, like but, it happened in Afghanistan, for example. Oh, yeah, um, that's something different. Yeah. That, but have that, you ever that, seen that, on the Spanish news where they ask people's opinion on the streets? You uh, see where the, the reporters go outside and they say, and let's see what Pepe thinks about the situation here and, in Madrid. Usually people... When you do that, usually people don't want to don't want to answer, don't want to be on TV. Most people escape. It's very difficult to get people to get to to talk to you if you interview them in the street. And then it's usually this only happens when you have agreed with them that yep. they will say something on TV because you have the the problem of the image, you know, the rights of image, and you have to agree before. And that's why. The, the, the journalist goes first and they sometimes they tell them how to say it and it doesn't look very natural. That's, no, that's and I, I don't I don't understand the value most of the time. I don't understand why it's important to ask people on the street what, no. 
doesn't what, make yeah. any sense. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, that's yeah. okay. that's my opinion. Next, breaking news. Breaking news. The breaking news. Well, we have breaking news today, for example, about the lava going into the sea today mm. from the volcano. That, that was breaking news early in the morning because I think it happened last night. All right. Yeah, about 12 o'clock. Yeah. So breaking news. It's funny, this term. I like it because it's like breaking, like coming, like, wow, now this is happening. And and then the American TV, especially Americans, they go, breaking news, breaking news. It's, they're very, they make a lot of noise. Uh, British people don't usually do that. Um, and in Spain, sometimes they had that in newspapers, but not on TV. Mm -hmm. uh, Ultimas noticias. This, that's the translation of that. Breaking news. Uh, okay. So breaking news. We are looking for breaking news all the time because you want to know, especially if there is a big disaster or there's a war going on, or the, there are things that you know people care about, you're always looking for breaking news. Yeah, the latest things that are happening the in the world. Thing. And another expression, foreign correspondent. A correspondent is a journalist who reports on the news and corresponds with the news agency. And be careful of the pronunciation of foreign because the spelling is strange. Foreign, foreign from a different country or a different place. So a foreign correspondent, and Monica gave the example of Afghanistan, will go to a country where something is happening, where there's breaking news, and they will give a report as a foreign correspondent. That's yeah, a, and... That sounds like a great job. I would love to have... Uh, you would like to do that? But yeah, I think it's really interesting. Uh, but you, yeah. you, you, you have to, depends on where you go, of course. If you go to a very risky place, it's not mm -hmm. so fun. Because, uh, but it's course, important It's important work to let the world know what's happening. It is important work. For example, somebody going to Afghanistan now, a journalist yeah. going there. The other day I was listening to a reporter, a correspondent. There was a woman in Afghanistan. And I thought, wow, you, you, you really have, you, because you risk your neck there. So, well, I was thinking that because when everybody yeah. left Afghanistan, I was thinking, why are the correspondents, the reporters, staying in the country? It must be very dangerous. And then I realized that they must have agreed with the Taliban. They must have agreed to let them stay. So I think the governments are speaking with the Taliban a lot more than we think they are. Probably. Probably you're right. Otherwise, they wouldn't because put them in danger. Yeah, but some people also, if you do this job, I think uh, you can be famous later. Uh, uh, all the journalists that were war correspondents, I, 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 I think I can tell you a couple of them, later they become famous because it's a risky job. Nobody wants to do it. Mm -hmm. So that some people say, okay, let's do it. Uh, Christine has a, quant a question. I cannot. Yeah, I saw that. Mm-hmm. You can say both, Christine. Um, you can work for a news agency in the same way that you work for a company. So you can be mm. a foreign correspondent for the BBC. And mm. if you say you're with an agency, a news agency, then you are part of the organization. So you could say, I, I'm with Voice of America. I'm with uh, Spanish News, for example. So you're with the company or you work for the company but you can really use those prepositions interchangeably it doesn't really matter very good question um what do you have yeah to cover a story to cover a story okay so you cover. send a journalist to cover a story uh journal there somebody hears some story going on for example like the volcano for example well that's very obvious but you have to send someone, the, the, for example, the TV, TV España, sends a journalist to cover the story about the volcano. And so that is interesting to learn the expression, to cover a story. But I think we would say the same in Spanish. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure. Maybe somebody else, uh, somebody can correct me, but I think it's cubrir la historia. It's a similar expression. So it's not so difficult to learn it. Many times it's, it's very easier than you think because it's the same expression in Spanish. 
So the, you need to cover a, a story there. We heard about a crime, for example. Yeah. And there are uh, journalists that are specialized in certain topics and, for example, uh, crimes. And they go and cover the story. They ask for eyewitnesses, who saw this, who saw that. So... A similar it. expression. A similar expression is to report on a story. You can report on the. So report uh, is a good word, yeah. But to the preposition with the preposition on. From there comes the word story. reporter. A reporter is somebody who reports on a story. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what What's next? To hit. This is another. We're looking at words now that you might commonly see or hear in news reports and you've probably seen this word before you you can hit someone um physically hit them i can i can hit monica like this bang, mm -hmm. pow but in the news if something is hit by something else it is uh, seriously affected by it for example a part of the country can be hit by bad weather conditions for example or the elderly population can be hit when the temperature drops. So that means they've been badly affected. Um, I don't know if Rafa, is Rafa here with us today? Because when the pandemic happened, he was, he works in tourism and he was hit by the effects of the pandemic, for example. Um, I, yeah, yeah, I was trying to find another example. Um, yeah, the, the, and, and the translation of this day, but I don't know. I had a, another example of hit. Yeah, Graciela's uh, saying to be hit by the pandemic. Many people yeah. have been hit by... I, I've been hit by the pandemic because I lost my job this summer. My school, the British Council, they um, made many people redundant because they were hit by the effects of the pandemic and many students are not studying. So lots of teachers, myself included, were made redundant. So I was hit by the effect of the pandemic. I was affected yeah, by it in a negative way. Hit by the pan pandemic or there's yeah, another affect, uh, exactly Anna. Yeah. yeah. There, there's another meaning that I wanted to share too. The stock mm -hmm. hit a record high today on the earning news. The earnings news. And, and this is and this meaning is the stock hit is alcanzar, so mm -hmm. reach a, a record high. La, las acciones alcanzaron una, un alza record hoy eh, in the earning news, en las, en las noticias de las, sobre las ganancias. No? To hit a record, that is also an expression. And sometimes you don't understand because you think the word hit is to beat, like uh, like Greg said at the beginning. And then you start reading and said, the stock hit a record high. What the Arrived, what arrived is, at this yeah, level. What is yeah. the meaning of that? Because it's nothing to do with hit. Yeah. And, and that's why I said to Craig, I think this is a very interesting class because many people, when you read, especially British press, not, not, not so much Americans because they use simpler words, it's quite difficult to understand the, the headlines because you, you'll find all kinds of words like this that you say, hit? But it, uh, what is exactly the meaning of hit? In it's this nothing context, to do with, yeah. Well, yeah. So exactly. you, have to think, you, you have to think twice before you understand the meaning. And we'll see, we'll go over several words like that, that they are very confusing meanings. Also Perhaps because, saying in the chat, sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, and I wanted to say that also because the way they write it is very concise. It's only con the idea is only one paragraph sometimes to make it shorter. And so you have to get the idea without verbs, without the article, without, and then you say, oh, what, what kind of headline is this? <laughs> what am I reading? Okay. So you were showing some question or something? Yeah, we've got some comments coming in. So Pab says it's an affection. Uh Affection with two Fs would be yeah. uh, cariño, I think, in Spanish. Yeah. So it would be affected by is a better way to say it, perhaps. Affected so, by, yeah. yeah I, affection is when you're, when you're, oh, oh, yeah, when affection. you're being cariñoso. Yeah. That's affect to show affection. So that's mm -hmm. a false friend. Be careful of that. And um, so hit, golpear, hit, 
afectar and hit alcanzar three meanings yeah. for three one meanings. word yeah uh, do, um, do you word, use the word coverage of a story yes so that's the noun coverage. so mm. the expression was with the verb to cover a story and coverage mm. is the noun so um the reporter gave wonderful coverage of the story um or on the story you can say also yes uh, here's another another this this song i cannot see it because i have um i have the icon of the chat on top it says natalia nunez says this song will be a hit another meaning of hit another yeah. meaning of hit yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's on, yeah. Uh, hit is in the, in this case is um a hit is um super ventas no so, something like yeah the, success success it's yeah. a it's a hit it's a big hit yeah it's a big hit what yeah. was arianda grande's biggest hit her greatest yeah, success exactly. her best her best song another her, meaning of song. it so yeah. that you have to think twice before you read the headline and say okay what is the meaning here <laughs> and speaking of words that have more than one meaning maybe a literal meaning of hit and an idiomatic meaning here's another word that can have an ah, idiomatic meaning yes. i like that you... one okay that's yours to axe is means to cut Ch and and dar un achazo. but i think these words it's, it's a little bit like exaggerated and that's why it's used by newspapers because newspapers are trying to call the attention of the reader so they use very intense words so that you read it and and so to ask uh, is used a lot. It's like a collocation with jobs. Let me see. For example, the actress was reportedly axed from this film because she is not profitable, for example. So yep. that means that she lost her job. <laughs> she was fired. And so because they cut the job and, and they did it with an ax. There is an acha. <laughs> so you say, why? Why do they say it that way? And it's funny. I learned that word in a headline because I thought, why ax? Why ax a job? Um, and it's because it's more intense than to say they fire her. <laughs> or more they, violent, yeah. Or they suck her. Uh, more violent, exactly. So mm -hmm. you, when you read the headline, you say, wow, what happened? They killed her? <laughs> this, Chop, and, chopped her head off. Yeah, they chopped <laughs> the head off. And in a way, it's too, okay, because you lose your job, the, they, they really chopped your head off. She was but given the not, sack. Yeah, but it's not, as, the... it's not as violent, Graciela. Yeah, it's no, not, it's not as impact, impactful. Yeah. She was axed. Yeah. She was axed. And they, they love to say this kind of thing so that you, it's clickbaits. Clickbait is another word that, uh, that we use a lot to ask. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't know any other example. Christine says, I've heard full, detailed, comprehensive. Yes, those are all yeah. good collocations, collocations. for yeah. coverage, comprehensive Something. coverage yeah. of the story, yeah. detailed coverage of the news. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All, all good collocations. So we've got um, to back, which is another word that can have an idiomatic meaning because, well, actually, when it's a noun, it's easy, isn't it? This is your front and this is, and your, this is the back. your back. Easy. This is the, the front of the paper. This is the back, the back of the paper. But the verb to back someone means to support them. For example, the minister backed the prime minister when he decided to increase the price of electricity, for example. So when you back someone, you support them. You give them your support to back. Yeah. Respaldar, I think. Yeah, respaldar Spanish. or give support, apoyar also. Yeah. So Imagine example, you're working for a company and you don't earn a lot of money and you decide to go to your boss to ask for a raise. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to go by yourself. You want all of your colleagues to go with you to back you. So you'd say to your colleague, will you back me if I ask for a raise? Will you, back? Will you come and with you me try... and support me? Sorry. If you yeah? try to look for the word back in the dictionary in this case, it will be quite difficult to find the meaning huh? because most of the examples refer to phrasal verbs or 
I'm back, for example. Estoy de regreso, ya he vuelto. Other, other kinds of meanings. There, there is a phrasal verb to back up, which means the same, but because mm -hmm. it's in the news and because it's usually about formal subjects, And yes. we know, we've said many times that phrasal verbs tend to be more informal. Informal. Hmm. Then it's more common to just say, say the, back. The, the prime minister backed back. the government or the or government I backed. I could say, I have another example. I back this candidate for mayor, for example. Mm -hmm. mm, so to back someone. And, and it's usually in politics. That's why it becomes it's, it's a little bit more formal, no? The government, administration, this kind of. But when you try to look for the meaning, really, it's really difficult to find the, the meaning, this meaning of to support someone. Mm -hmm. you know? Back up, yes, but not back. It's just the back is just the back of someone. And there's another meaning that's not so common. I don't know if you saw it in the dictionary, Monica, when you checked, but you can also, it also means to bet on something, apostar. Uh -huh. you, yes, you can as a, back yes, a horse or back a you dog can, yeah, exactly. or back a football team, which because means you in, put money on them to win. Yeah, because in a way, it's in a figurative way also to support, to, yeah, mm -hmm. to bet. You, you stand up for, Christine says. Stand up for somebody will be... Um, I think it's not exactly the same. Is, back is, is back is to give support to oh, someone yeah. and stand up for is to defend. For example, you can stand up for women's rights, which means you're defending women's rights. You can stand mm. up for anti-racism. So you're standing up for your beliefs, you're standing up for your principles, you're you're um representing something you believe in. Whereas back is to definitely support someone or something. You're backing a decision or you're backing a colleague. You're giving them support. So, yes, they're similar, but not exactly the same. Backstreet There's Boys. Another, There's another yeah. one. The, back, the Backstreet Boys. Very good band from the 1980s. Yeah, but then, that means another. The Backstreet. Backstreet, is, yeah. Is, a small uh, street. Callejón. Something exactly. Like yeah, like an alley. A dark, Mali. dangerous place yeah. with no mm -hmm. lights, a back street. Yeah. Andrea Paula is asking, let me see if I can see here. What is the difference between back and support? I guess as verbs to back yeah. and to support. Very it's similar. Informal Very similar. and formal. I think back is more informal probably than support because support is a Latin word. And usually Latin words are always more formal. Um, to back Anything? someone, to support someone. Do I, you, I, do you I don't same. know. I'm not sure. I think it's more or less the same. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think no. back up is definitely more informal because it's more a phrasal verb. But without the preposition, probably the same. Yeah. I would always say that support is more. There formal. is a difference, though, because to support can be morally to support someone, and to back is morally mm. to support someone. But physically, I would only use support. Mm -hmm. For example, I put some bricks or something to support the table oh, physically okay, yeah. to the hold it use. in yeah. place. Yeah. But I would not no, use not back. Back for that meaning. Yeah, great. No. So. Okay. What's uh, next? Next one. Um, I'm lost. Boost. Boost. Is it, Boost is it you or is me? The, The same as to increase. Yes. And I, I think that probably people are used to this word in Spanish because it's used in Spanish sometimes. Um, some brands use this, this word. For example, color. I remember some years ago there was a commercial about um, color for your hair, mm -hmm. a very big brand, and said color booster. So meaning to increase the color, <laughs> uh, but in financial language, they, they use a lot uh, this, this to boost the economy, for example, to boost the economy. So to make it better, to improve the economy, because it means, you know, to increase um, probably the uh, GDP, the 
domestic product. You boost mm -hmm. the economy by, for example, putting money into it. Like now after the pandemic, if the European Union puts money into all the countries, it's going to boost the economy. And then I have another a collocation with Morale. The, to boost Morale, the boss picked up the tap for everyone's lunch. Okay. So, uh, well, there you have an, a phrase over this little bit, to pick up the tap. So pay for the lunch for everybody to pick up the tap. Uh, mm -hmm. And this to boost morale of the team of, of any is you can boost morale and that's a collocation, you know. And what do you do, uh, Craig, to boost morale for yourself? To, or to boost my morale, um, yeah. I have right. some chocolate, maybe a piece of chocolate <laughs> cake that, that boosts my morale. Or <laughs> so, I don't know, but the what. I wanted to ask you. I've just put an expression in the in the chat. I don't know if in the Spanish media uh, they're speaking jabs. about booster jabs. The jab is the injection of the COVID vaccine. Yeah, they are. And in some media outlets, some web uh, websites and news outlets, they're speaking about having a booster jab, which is to boost the original vaccine, make it stronger. Are they speaking about that in using the English word booster jab? No, I don't think so. No, okay. Uh, you... No, I think that they are speak, speaking about the third doses. Right. Uh, that's how third they say doses. it. Yeah, but sometimes okay. you see that in English you have these very comfortable sentences that in one word you explain lots of things. <laughs> that is booster, in two words, booster jabs, it says everything. Because a boost you know? is like a positive push. It's pushing yeah. something positively in one direction. Wow. Um, Christine saying things. something Boost boosts your, your immune, immune system. system. Exactly. Yeah. Makes it stronger. Gives it a push. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't know what Joanna means when she says se quedó pillado. Do you I think it was the video. The, the oh, okay. stream live video that maybe probably was frozen. And that's what they mean. Ah, uh, that's probably your internet, Joanna, because it looks okay from our end. So I think mm. it might be your internet. Breakthrough. If there is a breakthrough in something, then there is a big success. So this could be a verb or a noun. You can have a breakthrough or you can break through with something. Let me think of, it, of an example. Um, there's been a breakthrough in the fight against cancer, for example. They've discovered a cure. They've discovered something that will really help. So it is a medical breakthrough. So you're breaking through something with something else. You can obviously do that physically. You can physically break through a wall to the other mm -hmm. side. But it's used very often in the news and it's used idiomatically to have a breakthrough in science or to have a breakthrough in discussions. Uh, maybe next month is going to be the COP meeting in in Glasgow about climate change. So maybe there will be a breakthrough in the way we look at climate change. Who knows? Yeah, it's usually used in science, this, this word. And... Uh, the meaning is progreso, avance, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, success, the breakthrough, uh, breakthrough. I also have one. Let me see if I have an example. Uh -huh. So thousands of people research alternative energy because a breakthrough will change the world and make fortunes. There you go. So breakthrough. a breakthrough and alternative. We wish, we wish there were a breakthrough in alternative energies now because of the price of electricity going up all the time so yeah do you think there's going do you think there's going to be a breakthrough when they meet in glasgow next month for climate change i hope so but i don't think so you're not optimistic <laughs> no because it's quite difficult to get together and agree on the same thing because people yeah. have countries have opposite interests some countries want to grow and others wants to stop the growth because it's not mm -hmm. sustainable, basically. So it's very difficult to um, have a breakthrough because uh, yeah. unless we're, uh, we're going to have a breakthrough when everybody is up to here with the climate change and there's nothing else you can do, there will be a breakthrough. But okay. what you said earlier about um, alternative energy... Mm -hmm. I think it will be more expensive, not cheaper. I think if we change to cleaner energy, 
initially in the beginning, it's going to be more expensive for us, for the consumer, obviously better for the planet, but more expensive to create that alternative energy. So people are not going to be very happy when all of their energy bills go even higher. It's true. Uh, I think it's true because probably um, all these alternatives do not really cover the... It's not possible to to produce the amount of energy that you need for the amount of population there. Mm -hmm. And probably that's why it's, it's much more expensive. And this is what is happening now, basically, because China is buying gas a lot. And so it's impossible to compete with them because there are too many. Exactly. And and so mm -hmm. the prices go up and up because of that. But well, the best thing is, I think, not to think too much about it <laughs> because you're not going to solve it. This doesn't have an easy solution, this. Okay? No, I know. I and usually the solutions will come, the breakthroughs will come in the future. Eventually they will come because uh, through the world history, you always see in human kinds that there's uh, eventually there's some kind of solution and, and the world starts again uh, with, a, with new parameters because we have to change the way we think probably. Let's hope okay. so. Let's hope you're right. Then there's a breakthrough soon. Yeah. yeah. Clash. Clash. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, this is my word. The word clash is very. Um, is is this is to collide? To have two opposite opinions or uh, or ideas. So let me see if I can find um, a good um, example. So when, protesters when, clashed with the police. Exactly. Protesters clash. Clash is because they have opposite um, interests. So the police wants uh, the street to be quiet, and the protesters, um, the protesters want to change the world. So there is a clash, and you can say another clash was reported in the Middle East or in Afghanistan, for example. You have many uh, at the beginning in August there were many clashes there mm -hmm. because the people were fighting for opposite interest, no. Some of them wanted freedom and the other ones didn't want freedom. So they are clashes. So opposite views on something. There's and another then, meaning I thought of is yeah. that, um, for example, two colors, you can have green and pink. Green and pink don't don't go well together, do they? Mm -hmm. They, don't they clash. You, yeah, they clash. Colors yeah. can clash. If two colors don't look good together, you can say, don't wear those trousers, don't wear that shirt, they clash. They don't look good together. But now it's in fashion Same to do idea. that. Is it? <laughs> yeah, I think I could wear green and Phew, pink. That's lucky for me because I never know which colors go together. So that's good, no, that's good I news. Think it's little, if you notice, if you pay attention, now there, there, there are a lot of colors that clash and that is supposed to be modern. <laughs> I'm happy. That's a breakthrough for me. The breakthrough, for, yeah. Yeah, I can we're wear getting, any, any shirt getting, and any... <laughs> I think we're getting more... Uh, we're getting more informal, and, and the dress code is 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 just everybody is dressing down more and more. No, yeah, yeah. The, so yeah. it doesn't matter the colors you wear. It doesn't matter. The, Maybe the that's kind of one shirt. good thing that came out of COVID that everybody yeah. was at home working in their pajamas, and yeah. nobody cares. Nobody cares what they wear anymore. Because I remember in the past, if you went to an office, guys had to wear a tie and a suit in the 70s and the 80s even in the 90s and the, and the women had to wear uh, also a suit a skirt and stockings and yeah, they were very, very uncomfortable when so, i worked in an office i had a suit and tie in tie yeah it was really uncomfortable i hated and it so yeah. now it's casual wear everywhere yeah i think joanna's opposite. speaking about clash it's not exactly it's not opposite uh, it's not contrario. Clashes violently to oppose something. So, so if the uh, imagine there's protesters in Glasgow when they have this climate summit. If the police clash with the protesters, there will probably be violence because they will be fighting each other. Yeah. Um, they, also, idiomatically, you can have two politis politicians that clash yeah. on a topic. So they're arguing. Yeah violently against each other they're arguing in opposition the, the word in spanish if you want to know is enfrentarse okay? oh thank enfrentarse. you perfect that's the what they mean so have 
hay ser opposite views, para el violin, es enfrentarse o tener un enfrentamiento, un choque. Yeah. Que dar, dar ese clash. Chocar. Christine's got an example for breakthrough. The Bion company is about to offer a sneak peek. I like that mm -hmm. expression of a significant breakthrough in the treatment of cancer. A peek is a, a quick look. Yeah, a sneak, sneak peek. peek, a quickly to look at something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Maite's got a question that's not connected to the news, but I think we can answer it if you're watching, Maite. So the difference between trip, journey, and travel? Well, travel is usually a verb, and a mistake I hear from many Spanish students is they use travel incorrectly as a noun. As a noun. You don't say yeah. a travel. You say mm. a trip. I'm going on a trip. So you yeah. travel as a verb. I am traveling next week. I'm going I, on a trip to Barcelona. But you can say travel agency, like an adjective. There yes. are certain collocations with travel which can become an, a noun, but is like Craig says, is most most of the time is a verb, not a noun. So if you are doubting, don't use travel as a noun. It's only a trip in journey. It's a one day trip. Journey is trayecto, isn't it? Yeah. The journey from yeah, the, the uh, journey by train takes two hours in trayecto. Yeah, it's usually I use it like for one day trip because I think it comes from the French. It is from jour, so that means day. Ah, of course. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so trayecto. El trayecto is just you know to go from one point to another point yeah so that's the journey was the journey so maybe the origin of that word comes from there from it was what is what is the journey what is your daily journey well now nowadays we don't have that because <laughs> at least in my nobody's case, going I, anywhere <laughs> no, <laughs> but in the past there were commuters commuters are people that live in the outskirts of the city and their journey I remember that. I remember yeah, that. the yeah. journey is to go from where they live in the outskirts of the city to go to the office that is in the in the city center or in downtown so that's the journey that the and it usually takes place in the day so one day sure that's so yeah that we hope that's helped you maite with your question yeah. um to snub to snub i Have like that word but it's a difficult word because to me it sounds like snob it's similar if you think it's of similar. the idea of a snob of having like yeah. a, a nose you put up your nose and yeah. you look down at someone because you're a snob it's quite similar because if you snub someone then you okay. rudely avoid them you yeah. impolitely avoid them and you're disrespectful to that person imagine the spanish prime minister is going to visit the american president but the American president decides that he's not going to meet him. He just decides he's going to walk in the park instead. So the headline in the newspaper or on the news, the breaking news might be American president snubs Spanish prime minister. Hmm. So he's disrespectful. He's avoiding to meet him and he's looking kind of down his nose at him. So it, it can, it's quite similar to snob actually. Yeah, that's why I say it. Snub. To ignore. It can mean Every, to ignore. To ignore. ignore uh, to, yeah. You are uh, snubbing all my suggestions. Every time I make a suggestion, you say you're not correct. Or yeah. you just don't hear me. Sometimes you... That's very impolite also. Monica so snubbed it, me this week because she, she didn't see two of my emails. Uh, <laughs> she, snubbed, she snubbed me. She, yeah, but this too. But that was... <laughs> The, the, that was not intentionally. It's just that all his emails always go to spam or to trash. So I think he must have written an email. And where is it? It's not coming. So and you weren't thought, snubbing oh, me. Let's check the, the, the trash folder. And two mm. times. And I think it's because we send attachments. The, the Gmail account thinks it's a, it's a spam. And just yeah. sends it directly to, I don't know why. Since it directly Maybe. to trash. So I found him in the trash, actually. I said, oh, you Where I should be. <laughs> <laughs> so I snubbed him because of that. Because I I just was disrespectful. 
And I was really looking no, forward to it. No, I'm joking. It, it, wasn't, it prepare, wasn't on purpose. I wanted to prepare my banners but because I love to make the banners. And I said, he's not writing to me. Where is this? <laughs> And then but I if you, the, but you, I don't think you can snub somebody by accident. I think you no, have to do it on purpose. It's intentional. Yeah. 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 And I wanted to say the word in Spanish. And in Spanish, we say desdeñar or desechar. It's like mm -hmm. desdeñar. It's like not, not, not to pay any attention. She didn't mean to snub you, Craig. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't mean to. Graciela says she didn't mean to snap very good sentence. I know no, she didn't. I know. I but didn't some... mean to snap him because I just I was just looking forward. But then I had to send a WhatsApp. Where are your emails? I cannot find them. Oh I, I thought remember. I thought you were giving me the cold shoulder, Monica, this week. Cold shoulder, yeah. No. Yeah, giving me the uh, cold shoulder, the, ignoring, yeah. ignoring get me, someone snubbing there. me. Yeah, give a, the cold shoulder. No, usually I don't do that. That's not, I, I I try not to do things that I wouldn't like the people do to me so i take care of these details <laughs> uh, okay um Vaughan okay Ningüenial. oh anna has a very good a very good translation Ningüenial. yeah i like that one spanish uh, Ningüenial. That's yeah. difficult for me the, to say yeah it's Ning a little bit difficult Ningüenial is Ningüenial. exactly that uh, exactly that uh, in fact biden did this to sanchez actually did he <laughs> He did. He did do it the first time they met, I think, and it was everywhere in the press that that Biden talked like thirty seconds with uh, President Sanchez <laughs> <laughs> because he wanted to have a meeting, but they they showed him just like two seconds, and that was it. So he snapped yeah. him. We really did it. Vow and pledge. That's for you, no? Uh, Vow and pledge. Yeah, both of yeah. these words really mean strong promises a promise to someone that's has more weight than an ordinary promise when you get married you vow you make your vows so verb and a noun to vow and to make a vow and if you make your wedding vows then you promise to be faithful to your partner to always love them to always take care of them in sickness and in health and those are your vows your wedding vows I vow to always love you, for example. And pledge is very similar. It's a strong promise. And pledge is often used when, let's talk about climate change again, because it's always in the news um, lately. So when countries pledge to reduce carbon emissions, they're promising to do so in the future. So a pledge is a promise that you make for the future. Uh, another example with our podcast, people pledge money on a service called Patreon. So they're not actually paying us for something, but they're promising to send us some money if we continue creating podcasts. So they'll pledge $1 a month, for example. So it's a promise to do something in the future. Mm -hmm. So vow, I, I, well, pledge to me seems even more formal than vow, but vow, um, it's quite common actually this verb in headlines. Mm -hmm. if you ask me, uh, and 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 when you and everyday conversations, it doesn't come as often. But in headlines, no. yes, it's funny because about her, for example, she vowed to make the world a better place. Okay, vowed. So. Uh, oh, Madrid pledges. Madrid pledges to improve the transport service exactly. in 2025. And you and you find these two words a lot in the newspapers, but when people speak, you never hear them saying these words. It's not I promise or yeah, something like more simple. Vow. Yeah. The police, vow. every vow you make, every step you take, yes. I'll be watching yes. you. Yes. Every vow good. you make, every move. good that you know the lyrics. I have no idea about lyrics. And um, yeah, vow of the nun. What's that, Heidi? Vow of the nun. Nun is monk. Maybe it's um, ah, yes, of course. Nuns make it, vows, yeah, a priest and yeah. priests too, yeah, uh, religious people that make vows because uh, in order to to live together they have to make vows of for example be obedient 
there's a, poverty, a chast- there's chastity, a chast- chastity, chastity to, poverty, to stay a virgin, obedience. Yeah. Uh, at least in the Catholic Church, it's quite <laughs> it's quite hard because it's, it's, all these vows are very difficult to really comply or to. Mm. I, uh, this, this, what does to take the take pledge the mean? Yeah, use the word do, use does as a question word there, Christine. What does take the pledge mean? Um, there's there are private organizations. My dad, when he was alive, he belonged to an organization called the Masons, which is a charity organization, uh, and people met and they pledged to be they pledged to obey the rules of the organization so i think in that particular organization they did use that expression to take the pledge which means to make the strong promise so you're using pledge as a noun it's also a verb to pledge and make a pledge or take a pledge and if it's a particular pledge then you'd use the article the take the pledge so it's a special promise that you make for a particular reason. Okay, to make a vow also. Convocation. Yeah. Make a vow. make a vow. Make your yeah. wedding vows exactly. Yeah. To make a vow. So, should we finish with one final question? I think we've got five minutes. Um, okay. How do you stay informed? This is a question for for us and also for people watching live at the moment. Where do you get your news from? Is it important to stay informed, to know what's happening in the world, or is it just too depressing that you just don't want to be bothered with the bad news? How do you feel about it? What do you think, Monica? How do you stay informed? Do you watch the news every I, day? Yeah, I, well, first of all, I said at the beginning that I am a headline reader. Yes. So I check several newspapers, left, wing, center. I like to check all of them. Because, Me too. Uh, to see if they say opposite, they have opposite views and to make different different the, news sources. Yeah, because I want to be informed because they, they see the problems in different ways. So yes. now you have the possibility. In the past, you had to buy all those newspapers and you couldn't do that. But now you can just check the headlines. Mm-hmm. And then what I do is sometimes in the evening when I go to bed, I, I watch the news. Um, to see the, for example, the volcano, the things, the the problem with the petrol, um, the shortage of petrol in the UK, these kind of things, because I, I like to see the images, what happened during the day. So, but it's usually very short because because we can consume information in different ways nowadays. I tend to use more like uh, Netflix, YouTube, other sources of information rather than the news. It's like a, it's like a second priority for me. They also, I hear sometimes panelists, they, when they have these talk shows, they give opinions from the left, from the center. From, mm-hmm. But in the past, I used to watch it the full hour. Now my husband and I, we just watch it like five minutes, turn it off. Because uh, basically, because you can consume information that is specifically for you, and that's the big change in the last ten years. We've yes. Seen that. But in the, yeah. everybody consumed in the past the same information, but yeah. nowadays you choose your sources. No, where do I think you that's want that's to? the danger that because we're following different social media <laughs> platforms, that the algorithms on these platforms are feeding us news that we want to see and we want to hear. So on that panel you mentioned where you've got balanced opinions or looking at different news sources, you're getting a balanced view of what's happening. But if you're own, well, Christine says she's only getting her news on Facebook, but she's flicking through digital newspapers. So maybe that's not the same as just getting Facebook's, I don't know, opinion but yeah that, um, that i would be a, careful yeah. with facebook i think they use their algorithm to give you things you want to read and exactly. sometimes that's not always healthy yeah that's true that that is true i read an article about that that there was a guy who was did not manage to get <laughs> online any other opinion that wasn't his own opinion 
Exactly. Because the algorithm, not only of Facebook, Google, everywhere, yeah. they're feeding you with the things you want to listen or read. Yeah. And, and then you don't see the other perspectives. You cannot see it because it simply, it doesn't show, it doesn't show in your organic list of, mm -hmm. I, and, you, and you're not even aware. The worst thing is that you're not even aware of that because if you don't start researching, that's why I want... also I, I turn on TV too, but it's also, well, it's something like you have to do some research. Also, I like to ask opinions to different people. That's mm -hmm. one way because people have different opposite views sometimes of the same topic. And some people are more informed and some people are not informed at all. They have no <laughs> idea of anything. That's true. So, I just want to emphasize one an expression that Christine used to flick through. Uh, That's a lovely phrasal verb, yeah. which means to go quickly through, to flick, to, to just turn the page quickly or click quickly through things that's a nice expression and Graciela says that she reads the online news every day but what news source do you go to Graciela I want to recommend two that are good for students of English one is Voice of America which obviously has American American bias and obviously American accent and then there's the, obviously the BBC which is more British, so I'll put those two links in More the chat. British? It is British. <laughs> well, it is British, but they do have world news, so it's not ah, only British okay. news, but it's the true. accents are usually obviously British accents. Um, I also look at Al Jazeera sometimes, because Al Jazeera, although they are biased in some of their reporting, at least they give a wide, worldwide view of what's happening not only in Europe, not only in North America, they also give news in Central and South America, in Latin America, in the Middle East, in Africa, in India. So they're giving a, a general view of what's happening. I like Al Jazeera sometimes. For, I, for never, a, I never checked view. Al Jazeera. Uh, BBC News, yes, almost every day. Mm -hmm. Voice of America, I love that site because it's an opportunity for people who are starting to learn English. It's a very mm -hmm. good site. Because yeah, they have, have uh, the news in easy English, don't they? They have yes. very, very slowly yes. read news. It, so if you're a very beginner, it's very read good. And some very interesting topics about science. And they're updating it all the time. So if you even yeah. have online courses for English. Uh, people that they speak English as a second language. It's a very, very good uh, resource, Voice mm -hmm. of America. And We're BBC up... is a classic. It's just simply a classic. I mean, we're nearly out of we are nearly out of time. Should we just quickly go through the words one more okay. time to remind okay. people of what we okay. looked at? So we had yes, of course, headline, headline, and deadline. Deadline, deadline. So titulares, I would say titulares mm -hmm. y plazo tope o fecha tope. Exactly. Uh, you and can say a... it in English and I'll say it in Spanish. Okay. Okay. I, I wit eyewitness reports. So informe de testigo ocular. Breaking news. Últimas noticias. Ay. Últimas noticias. Uh, foreign correspondent. Corresponsal extranjero. To cover a story. Cubrir una historia. To hit. Uh, golpear, alcanzar. <laughs> Dice, al golpear, uh, alcanzar. Y uh, tener dice, éxito. Tener éxito, ya. Yeah. To axe. Cortar, sobre todo trabajo. O sea... Echar. To back? Back. Someone? Apoyar. Apoyar. To boost or a boost? Incrementar. Eh, sí. Un enf enfatizar. Subir. Muy bien. Breakthrough. Avance, Urban progreso en ciencia. Sí, sí. And clash. Enfrentamiento. Snub? Oh, you got me here. Snap is, somebody has to say this, snap is eh, desechar o desdeñar. Mm. Okay, yes. Yeah. Next one. Um, and the last one was vow or pledge. Eh, prometer. Yes, very good. But well that's done. it. That's it. You don't have to explain too much. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you uh, for watching. Oh, Graciela says that she usually... Reason no local newspapers online, local news, yeah. 
the world's too de depressing, Graciela. I think you're better to stay local and just yes. worry about your community. Yeah, very mm -hmm. wise. Um, she says, as a teacher, I try to use headlines in my lessons. Yes, that's a very good idea. And then you can get the students to think of the verbs because usually headlines don't have verbs, do they? Like no. snow hits Andalusia. Yeah. What about the verbs? Why aren't there any verbs in that sentence? So that's that's fun. Anyway, thanks for watching. We have to go and have something to eat and then we're going to watch the news. So we hope your okay. news this week is all good news. And yeah. thank you to Monica for being here. We'll be back next week. I'll be back with, um, with not with Monica, but with, with Lynn. With Lynn. Yeah, thank so you. Don't Go forget ahead. to visit Mansion del Inglés, English podcast. Yeah, I'm just, just going to give you. I'm just going to give you the banners. Going to give you the banners. So if yeah. you want to go to Mansion Inglés and learn English for free, there are lots of uh, courses and material, lots of um, vocabulary exercises, all sorts of things on MansionEnglés.com. And if you like listening rather than reading and doing exercises online, we have a podcast that you can find at EnglésPodcast.com or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And Monica. And Blog del Inglés, where you can find resources in Spanish, infographics, videos, uh, all kinds of things. No, podcasts also. And, and the, the advantage is that it's also explained in Spanish. So if you have a doubt, you can find the answers there. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank see you very much. Eduardo is just joining us. Eduardo, you're too late, but you can yeah. see the replay on Facebook. It yeah. will be there in a few minutes. So you have to okay. go over there and watch from the beginning. Thank okay. you. And we'll see bye -bye. you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.